Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Particle Physics Brick by Brick, where we're trying to explain as much about particle physics as we can using Lego. In this episode, we are going to be talking about baryons and mesons. In the electromagnetism video, we talked about how particles can come as either positive or negatively electrically charged, and that these two oppositely charged particles will attract one another. And the reason behind this is that when they form something that's electrically neutral, that object is lower in energy than the particles were when they were originally charged. That is because there is a dip in potential energy between the two particles. Because both particles have the opportunity to approach a lower energy, they do. Everything in the universe wants to be at the lowest energy possible. And so the reason that a positive and a negative electric charge attract one another is because when they come together to form something which has a neutral electric charge or zero electric charge then it is overall lower in energy. Now this is the same for all of the forces. All of the forces are simply guiding particles towards lower energy and so in the same way when something is electrically neutral when a group of particles are neutral in terms of any charge they are also lower in energy and lower in energy means nice and stable. Now we also mentioned in the colour charge video that the analogy of electric charge in terms of the strong force is that of colour charge. And the idea that quarks come in three primary colours of red, green and blue. When red, green and blue merge they form white light. This has no overall colour charge. And so white is the colour charge equivalent of colour neutral. It has no overall colour. If we start adding quarks together we can work out what combination of quarks will lead us to something which is colour neutral? And if it's colour neutral, remember, it's going to be lower in energy. And so therefore it's going to be the most likely combination of quarks that will form a particle. If we started by adding a red quark to a green quark, we create something which is overall yellow. This still has a colour. If we added a blue to it though, the three primary colours added together would form something that is white or overall zero in colour charge. This means we can add three quarks together to form a particle, as long as one is red, one is green and one is blue. Now it doesn't matter which way we add these together. We could, for instance, start with a blue quark and then add a green quark to that blue quark before adding a red quark. So while we were adding three quarks together, one red, one green and one blue, it really doesn't matter which quark is what colour. And again, we can add a green quark first, to a blue quark, and then to a red quark. And we always end up in the same point, which is one along in the green, one along in the red, and one along in the blue, to form something which is overall colour neutral in terms of colour charge. This means that we can create stable particles using three quarks. And that's indeed what we can do. The name baryon is given to any particle made from three quarks. Its origin is in the word baryos in ancient Greek, meaning heavy. That is because the first baryons to be discovered were the proton and the neutron, and at the time they were the heaviest particles known, much, much heavier than the electron. And you'll notice here that a proton is made by putting two up quarks on top of a down quark, while the neutron is made by putting one up quark on top of two down quarks. But as we mentioned, it doesn't matter which of the up or down quarks has what colour. As long as there is one red, one green and one blue, they both form colourless particles which are stable. This is why protons and neutrons are stable and why they make up the nucleus of every atom. And we don't have to stop there. We can use other quarks other than up and down quarks. For instance, if we throw the strange quark into the mix, which is the heavier version of the down, then we can start building more weird and wonderful baryons. There's going to be more on this diagram in a future video, entitled Eightfold Way. The quarks that the particles are made from provide them with their properties, such as electric charge. Just to remind you from the electromagnetism video, the charge on the up quark is plus two thirds of the electronic charge, whilst the down quark has minus one third of the electronic charge. Let's then look at the proton. The proton made of two ups and one down, if we sum together the charges of the quarks, we get plus two thirds, plus two thirds, minus one third, which equals plus one. As we expect, we know that the proton has plus one charge. For the neutron, 
Let's split those apart and add together plus two thirds for the up, minus one third, minus one third for the two downs, and we get to zero, as we expect, again, because the neutron has a neutral charge. Now I mentioned in the color charge video that the opposite to those three primary colors of light of red, green, and blue are cyan, magenta, and yellow. What we can do is we can make antibaryons by combining antiquarks with those secondary colors. That means that if we start by adding a cyan antiquark to a magenta antiquark, we would then have to add a yellow antiquark before we reach something which was color neutral. If we combine all three of the secondary colors, we again come to a state where we are colorless because we have formed white light. Just as with baryons, it doesn't matter in what order we add the anti-colors of the antiquarks to form our anti-baryon. Which means that we can build anti-protons by putting two anti-ups on top of an anti-down, or we can create anti-neutrons by putting one anti-up on top of two anti-downs. And it doesn't matter which quark has what anti-color, because eventually, once they are completed, they are colorless. And these colorless antiparticles are stable. And again, this rule holds for all of the anti-quarks. So again, if we add into the mix the anti-strange, which is the next heaviest version of the anti-down, we can create weird and wonderful anti-baryons. And just as with the baryons, the anti-baryon property is defined by the quarks that make it up. So, just to remind you, the anti-up quark has an electric charge of minus two-thirds, while the anti-down has an electric charge of plus one-third of the electronic charge. Looking at the antiproton then, with two anti-ups and one anti-down, that would be a sum of minus two-thirds, minus two-thirds, plus one-third, which equals minus one, which is indeed the opposite electric charge to the proton. And then looking at the anti-neutron, and splitting those apart, we would get minus two-thirds, plus one-third, plus one-third, which equals zero. As expected, the neutron and the anti-neutron both being electrically neutral will both have zero electric charge. Now there's one further way in which we can get color neutrality, and that is by looking at the axes individually. If we look at just the blue axis, where we have yellow as the opposite to blue, if we add one blue quark to one yellow antiquark, then we get back to color neutrality. This means that we can add a quark of blue color and an antiquark of yellow color and still create a particle which is overall colorless. This works for all of the other axes as well. We can add a red quark to a cyan antiquark and we create something which is overall colorless or a green quark added to a magenta antiquark. And so there's an additional way in which we can create stable particles which are colorless. Well, I say stable, they're kind of metastable. They're not very stable because they are a mix of matter and antimatter. And as you may know, and as we'll discuss in another video, matter and antimatter aren't very happy sitting side by side. In fact, they want to annihilate one another. These particles are called mesons. The first mesons to be discovered were the pions. And these pion particles with positive and negative charge, as well as one with neutral charge, had a mass which was between the protons and the neutrons, the baryons, which were named after baryos, meaning heavy, and the electron, which was a lepton, named after leptos, the Greek for light. And so the mesons in between were given the name, which in ancient Greek meant middling. And so we can add an up quark to an anti-down quark to create a pi plus, or we can add an anti-up quark to a down quark to create a pi minus. And again, once these particles have formed, they are colorless. And so it doesn't matter which color the quark is, as long as the antiquark is the total opposite color to it. And again, what we can do is we can throw in other quarks. And as long as we obey the rules, we can create all sorts of weird and wonderful mesons. Again, there'll be more on this diagram in the Eightfold Way video. And again, it's the properties of the quarks inside of the mesons that give the mesons their properties, such as electric charge, 
Just a reminder, the up quark is plus two thirds in charge, the down quark minus one third, and therefore the anti versions of those are opposite in sign. So therefore, if we look first of all at the pi plus with an up and an anti down, and we do the sum of charges plus two thirds plus one third, we get to plus one as expected, hence its name, pi plus. And the same for the pi minus, where we have an anti up and a down. So a sum of minus two thirds minus one third, which equals minus one. Hence its name, the pi minus. So I'm hoping I've convinced you now that neutrality means that we can create stable objects, such as new particles. And that neutrality, when it comes to the strong color charge, is essentially a particle that has no overall color. We can achieve neutrality by either mixing together a red, a green, and a blue quark to form a baryon particle. Or we can achieve neutrality by mixing together three antiquarks with yellow, cyan, and magenta anticolors to create an antibaryon. Or we can mix a quark and antiquark together to form a meson. Thanks for listening. If you would like to know more, subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on social media for more information. You could also buy the book. Particle Physics Brick by Brick is available through online retailers and many local bookstores. Other languages are also available. If you follow this bit.ly link, you can also get access to lots of educational resources and information on where you can get your hands on LEGO to play along. LEGO is a registered trademark of the LEGO Group, which does not sponsor, authorise or endorse these videos in any way.